Hello everybody. Well, the relative success of this epoxy project to stiffen the gantry up seems to have been somewhat of a success. So I've decided to think about replacing the side plates with something made in epoxy. I've never liked them, especially with all these holes in it tends to weaken this point here and makes it a bit flexible. So I thought I might try and make these in epoxy granite. Uh, they'll probably need to be reinforced with some sort of rebar to prevent them breaking. Uh, but the first part of the project is going to be finding the right recipe to make these things in. I'm going to end up with them oh, about three quarters of an inch thick. So the idea is to make these in with fine sand, just the worn material, not a composite of rubble, coarse sand and fine sand. I want to see if I can get uh, a bit more definition in the material and just use fine sand. So I'm going to have to uh, develop some uh, samples with different recipes and choose the best one, I think, for the job. So that's going to be the first phase of this project finding the right recipe to make these parts in. The first two samples are going to be made with the same recipe. The only difference will be that one has some rebar in it to see how much it strengthens or weakens the sample. Well, I'm afraid I've been rather stupid here. I've managed to fill two or three of the Phillips heads with resin and I kind of, I kind of unscrew them. Well, that's rather stupid. Okay, well I'll come back when I've got that sorted out. Well, with a bit of brute force and good old uh, percussion engineering, I managed to get the screws out. So let's see if these will come off. Not very easily. What's happened? 
they've leaked because I've used them before they've leaked underneath and the resin has spread out and glued them to the to the baseboard I'm going to have to use a stronger method to get them off see you in a bit right I finally managed to get them out and I think uh, these moulds have seen better days now if I have to make any more I think I'll make some I know how to make some better moulds I think probably plywood's better than just ordinary wood and bigger edges thicker make them a bit more robust so these have seen their day so they'll get thrown away and I managed to get them out without too much more trouble now this sample is uh, the one with the rebar in because you can see the the chippings at each end which I used to support the rebar while it was setting so they have the rebar in and that's the same recipe without any rebar so the next exercise is to test them for strength and rigidity which I'll do by the same method that I've done all the other samples. So that's the next little job. One kilogram, 6. Kilograms point two seven four kilograms Well that's as, that's as far as the gauge will go. Right. So we'll release that. Doesn't fail. Right, this is a test on the one with the rebar. Three, two, one, six, three, and maximum twenty two is two point two point eight one. Right, pretty much the same, actually. So, I think you might be able to see that. The non rebar one being on the left of the long column, and the rebar being on the right. Pretty much the same, we get to the last. Loading is 2.76 against 2.81. Not a great deal of difference. In fact, the sample without the rebar in it seems to be a tiny bit stiffer. But that could be well within experimental tolerances. Well, 
Well, it looks like, according to the results here, that uh, adding a piece of rebar in the actual sample has very little effect on its rigidity. There's a tiny amount here, a rigidity of 8.15 kilograms per millimetre on the sample without any rebar and only 8.00 rigidity kilograms to millimetres displacement on the sample with rebar. So there's very little effect. In fact, there's a slight reduction in rigidity putting rebar in. However, if you However, if you happen to drop the s <laughs> a sample without rebar in it, this is what's likely to happen. This thing will snap like a carrot. So, what I think is probably a very uh, good thing to do would be to introduce a little bit of rebar in the mix in the sample or in your final part to prevent this happening. It doesn't seem to affect the rigidity very much and a little bit of rebar will prevent this happening I think if you happen to be a bit of a butterfingers like me. Well here as you see I've made three more samples so let's see how well I've prepared these. Well, it's look now, oh, yeah. Well, that's better. So I've just got to get these three out. So I'll come back to that later. Okay, all the screws are out. So, yep. Well, what a difference it makes preparing it properly. And there are the three new test samples and we've got a sample with 30 grams of resin 40 grams of resin and 50 grams of resin all with 200 grams of kiln sand And here we go with the removal process. When you're doing this sort of thing, always make sure that the, the effort is always over the post going down to the ground here, so you've got a good solid base down to the ground. So we're going to try and knock them out now. one so let's hope it doesn't smash let's hope that doesn't break be a little bit more careful with this one ah. good so this one should be all right And here are the final results. This first column is some 
old results, so we can ignore that. The next two columns are the first two samples we've just made in fine sand. I've got a, an asterisk beside them and a comment here, resin mix suspect, because uh, the the uh, balance machine seemed to stick just before I finished mixing the resin, pouring the resins in to mix them. So I'm not quite sure what these values ended up as. I guesstimated them. They may well be quite higher than maybe up to 50 or 60. I'm not sure. But they will serve to compare one with each other because they're both from the same mix. The rest of them, these four, two, three, four and five, are accurate. So as we saw previously, the results turned out to make the sample without the rebar a little bit stiffer than the sample with the rebar. Not a great deal. But I would imagine that the one with the rebar will be ultimately stronger than the one without the rebar. This one will fail under extreme load much sooner than the one with the rebar. I'm assuming. So we see from the others 30, 40, 50 and 60 grams of resin. All of the same proportions of resin to hardener I hasten to add. Let the strengths go up as we might imagine until we get to 60 grams of resin it, it did not fail at the maximum loading so if you want also ultimate strength as well for example if, if you know the part you're going to make is going to be under some fairly heavy loads then you might want to put some rebar in It'll just affect the rigidity slightly, but it'll make it much stronger. So that's in fact what I'm going to do in the parts that I'm going to make. Put a little bit of rebar in. Because as you saw, I dropped one sample without rebar and it just snapped like a carrot. So I think we've learned something from these uh, tests. hope you have.